this video, I'm gonna show you how to do this effect. Before we start in this tutorial, I used an add-on called RBD Lab, and I'll leave a link to this add-on in the description. It isn't free, but in my opinion, it's worth it. So I'm first gonna go into my camera options and add a background image, and switch it to movie clip and find your footage. Next, I'm gonna change my focal length to 35, cause that's what I shot my footage on. Then switch your renderer to cycles and GPU compute. Then I changed my max samples to 150 and then the noise threshold to 0.3. And under film, make sure you check the transparent option. Now in the world option, select environment texture and add in your HDRI. I highly recommend that you get an HDRI when you're filming and you can do this by using the HDRI app. Next, I'm gonna make two more windows and on the top right window, go into your camera. And if you want, you can get rid of all the extra info that we don't need to see. And on the bottom right window, switch it to shader editor. Now we can start creating the effect. Select your cube and by holding control on your keyboard, move the cube up on the Z axis. Now go into your camera and in the view tab, select camera to view option. Now move your camera so that the cube aligns with the ground of the footage. And I'm gonna go to where I start running and you can start creating your wall. Once everything is set, uncheck the camera to view option so you don't mess up the positioning. Next, select the cube and go to Object, Apply, and Apply All Transforms. Now in the shader editor, I'm just going to add a concrete texture that I found online. Now go to the UV editor tab and select the face of the wall. And scale it up and adjust the positioning on your texture. And I did this for the rest of the sides. Now find the RBD Lab window, and with the wall selected, click Standard Scatter. And increase your density so that the circle fills up the empty space, and you can also increase the size. Then check the Use Modifier box, and hit Accept. Then I change the max chunks to 500, then hit Fracture. And if everything looks good to you, you can hit Apply Fracture. Now go to the physics tab and change your cursor to select circle. Now you want to select the parts that you're going to be running through. And you can hide the layer to see where you are so you're not selecting the wrong parts. Then once you've done that, hit Ctrl I to invert your selection and hit set kinematic. Now add a ground. Then set the visibility to shadow catcher. Then select add rigid bodies. Now if you hit play, your wall should start crumbling. Next, we're going to add a UV sphere and change the position and scale that somewhat matches the subject of the original shot. Then set a location keyframe and follow the subject and set another keyframe. Now the sphere should match the movement and speed of you running. Then I'm going to put my keyframes back to the start of the timeline. Then in the physics tab, set your sphere to kinematic. Now the debris should start interacting with the sphere. Now you can go to the constraint tab and hit create constraint group. And now you can set a glue strength to your liking. The higher you set this option, the more intact your fractures are going to be. I ended up setting mine to 125. Now in the layers, make sure you hide the sphere render so that it won't show up in our shot. Now go to the bake tab and set the end frame to your choosing and hit bake. And you also want to make sure that you're saving constantly. Whenever you're doing any type of simulations, you're most likely going to have some crashes. I think Blender crashed like six times making this effect. So as long as you're saving consistently, you should be fine. Now in the particle tab, you can go ahead and hit debris. And off rip, the debris sim actually turned out perfect on the first go. Now you can go over to the dust option and hit create dust. Then I set the count to 30 and hit update. 
Anytime you're making changes, you want to make sure you hit update. So that way you can actually see the changes that you're making. Now, once that is good, you can go over to the smoke option and hit create smoke. And you're going to see extra particles. These particles are pretty much showing the motion of the smoke when you actually add in the smoke. Now go back to the bake tab and bake everything to keyframes. And now you definitely want to save because now we're going to add in the smoke. And this is what really is going to test your computer's limits. In the smoke tab, select from particles and add smoke. Now if you switch the top right window to render view, you can see what the smoke will look like. Now this is where you just start playing around with the settings to get your desired look. The main ones you want to look at is density multiplier and fuel multiplier. And once you've gotten the look you're happy with, you can select the domain box and in the shader editor, you can change the look and color of your smoke. Now go back to the bake tab and bake all dynamics. Next, select one of the fractures and make sure that the bottom texture is selected. And now you can add a texture. I just added the same concrete texture. Then if you want, you can add a color ramp node and connect it to the base color. And now you can change the brightness and color of the inside texture. Now set your render location and you can begin rendering. Now in After Effects, add in the render and right click and under Transform, select Fit to Comp. Then enable Time Remapping and extend the render to the shot. Now we have this. Then I'm going to duplicate the original shot and put it over the render and I'm going to shorten the timeline. Now you're going to want to roto yourself out. Next, select your roto and pre-compose it and make sure to check move all attributes. Now we want to make only part of the roto to show. This is going to create depth in your shot and actually make it look like you're inside the debris, I guess. So create a rough mask around the subject with only a little bit of the roto showing. Then invert the mask and feather it. Then click the stopwatch on the mask and start animating the mask so that over time, more of the roto starts to show. Now we have this. Next, I'm gonna add a Lumetri color to the render and start matching the color and lighting to the original shot, this is gonna make a huge difference. Then add the add grain effect and switch from preview to final output. Then set the intensity to 0.5. Now this is what it looks like before and after. Now I'm just gonna add some dust burst assets I got from Production Crate, just to add a little bit more to the shot and make it feel a little bit more explosive. Then select all your layers and pre-compose them. Then split the layer where there's initial impact and add the motion tally effect and change both the output width and height to 150 and check the mirror edges. Then I'm gonna add Production Crate's Camera Shake script, which there'll also be another link to this in the description and choose any of the presets and hit Jolt. Now we have some camera shake. Then I added some slight camera movement. And if you follow these steps, you should have something like this. That's going to wrap up today's tutorial. If you guys enjoyed, hit that subscribe and like. Something you should also keep in mind is that I've only used this add-on for like a few days. And so I'm like fairly new to like simulations and all that kind of stuff. So if you're more experienced than me and have some tips for me, I would love some constructive criticism. And also if you guys make anything for my tutorials, I would love to see them. You can send them to me through Instagram or just 
tag me. And yeah, with that being said, I will see you guys next week.